Morning. Trooper Cody and Steve. It's funny, you know, we've had a little bit of um, difficulty setting up this shot. And what it's made me realise is I always stand in this position. Cody always stands across this way with his head here to me. We needed to make a slightly different shot today. And he's, he's sort of saying, hang on, that's not my mark. I want my usual mark. So anyway, today's video is one of those, the police will be cross with me for telling you this. This is one of those police things that uh, when you think about it, you're going to say it's common sense, but you probably didn't think about it. So I'm in World War I uniform. I've got a pre-1900 saddle on the horse, on Cody. Got pre-1900 handcuff pouch, pre-1900 saddle mounted police baton on the other side. And so what am I going to talk about if I'm in a hundred plus year old gear? I'm going to talk about the very latest episode, the final episode of Jack Reacher's on TV. So Lee Child wrote the Jack Reacher books. Um, they made a couple of movies with Tom Cruise. People were unhappy with Tom Cruise saying he didn't fit the Jack Reacher character of six foot five and innumerable pounds and across the shoulders a full sixth lane highway and hands like spades. I really like Tom Cruise. I think he's a great charismatic actor and I liked him in the movies. Of course, they picked a much better suited looking person for Jack Reacher on television. What's Jack Reacher got to do with policing secrets and more than 100 year old equipment? So in the very last episode of the Jack Reacher The Killing Floor, the policewoman and a hostage, female hostage, have been taken and are handcuffed in a warehouse. Jack breaks into the warehouse late at night and he rushes up to where these two are handcuffed to a railing and he goes up to them and he puts the key in and he unlocks the handcuffs. Now, television, escapism, uh, suspended disbelief, all of these things, but so probably nobody ever thought, hang on, where do you get a key from for those handcuffs? The truth is, do you know how many handcuffs, handcuff keys there are? There's only one. If you're in Australia, in South Australia, and you go to Queensland, your handcuff key will unlock the handcuffs in Queensland. If you're a Sydney copper and you go to Los Angeles, your handcuff key will unlock the handcuff, handcuffs in Los Angeles. You go from Mexico, from New Mexico, Albuquerque, and you go to New York, your handcuff key will unlock the handcuffs. Now, if you initially think how crazy that is, that there is only one generic key to open all handcuffs, what you've got to think about is you can't be on patrol at a melee, M-E-L-E-E, what a wonderful word, a melee, at a brawl, and you handcuff somebody, but it gets out of control and your prisoner gets taken to the police station, you can't then say, oh, where's Steve? We need his handcuff key. And so that's why you can get a set of handcuffs, you can buy them legally, most places in the world you can legally buy handcuffs. You will get the key and that key, you know, put it under tiny, put it under your tongue, hide it. Criminals could unlock their handcuffs very easily. So, <clears throat> having said you can put your handcuff key under your tongue, you certainly wouldn't want to do it with that handcuff key, would you? Have a look at the size of that. I wouldn't even want to put that in my mouth. So, here's Cody. He's wearing his South Australian Police handcuff pouch that's mounted on the saddle. And these are a set of really old handcuffs. <clears throat> So these are the handcuffs the troopers would have carried a long, long time ago. As you can see, they're significantly different. 
They're significantly different to the modern handcuff and this key which also would have been in those days a generic key you just it's a screw in and as you screw it in it releases the handcuff like that both sides like that and then when you put it on you unscrew it and it stays wherever you set it on the wrist I put it on myself and do a demonstration but I probably wouldn't be able to get it off so there you go Again, once again, generic key. So the last thing I'll leave you with then is if you look closely, firstly there's a little hole in it. That little hole is so you can put it on a piece of string. It would have been on a piece of string. Um, and you can put it in your, if you remember the police uniform, there's a message. It's called the message pouch. You can put it in your message pouch, but it's got a little hole to put a piece of string in. But what you might, you won't be able to see this, but this has got the number on it, 238. And then you look at the actual handcuffs and they've got a number, 238. And you might say, why is it num why are they both numbered if they're generic? Because this still would have been generic, even 120, 130, 140 years ago, this was still a generic key, the same principle that you had to be able to swap. So why has it got, why are they both numbered? Why does it matter that they're both numbered? Because you were issued these when you first joined up, you were first a copper, you were issued with a baton, you were issued with the handcuffs. And so we would have been written in your personal record that I was issued with handcuffs 238 and there's 238 to match them. Now, coppers are human beings and when you have your kit that you're responsible for and you have, if you lose it you have to pay for it and they charge you outrageous sums for these things. So anyway, if you lose it, being human beings, what's happening? Nothing's happening. So if you lose it, you're a human being, you're going to say, shit, where can I find another one? And you might pinch somebody else's key. And so then you lost yours, you were negligent, but you pinch off some other poor copper. Trust me, these things happen. And that person who was not negligent mm -hmm. suffers because somebody that was a bit bent pinched their handcuff key. And so that's why it's a great safety measure, 238. And I'll just go, and when you say, Steve, surely that wouldn't happen. When I was a recruit in the academy, I went to go to class one day and I could not find my beret. We, we wore Balmorals while we were recruits and I couldn't find mine and to put, put a finer point on it the instructor told me to look at everybody's Balmoral that was sitting in the class and when I went round sure enough Al you've since passed away from cancer Al I know you're listening so I went up to one of the fellow recruits and picked up his Balmoral and inside, in a hidden place, I had written Westy. And sure enough, I could show him and show the instructor. And what had happened is good old Al had lost his Balmoral, so he just pinched mine. Well, I got mine back and he had to buy another one. And so, just as well, I've always been paranoid and had my name written on stuff in a hidden place. Bloody long video. Don't know what'll stay, what'll finish. What will get cut out? Anyway, what does it matter? It's my channel. I can write rubbish if I want it. There's a song in that. Talk rubbish. I've still got a little bit of COVID and it's a damn hot day. Excuses, excuses. Look at him. He hasn't put a foot wrong. Bloody champion that he is. Okay, until next time. Cheers. See you later.